Good morning, everyone. Rob. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> uh, Peter here and Rob here. Uh, the Switch is coming out next week. Uh, we've got one, and we've had a lot of time to play with Zelda. We can only talk about the first five hours. Uh, so today we're going to show you some of the gameplay. We're going to talk about what we've done, what we like, uh, what we hope for the future of the game, and we're going to talk about the Switch a little bit. Uh, yeah, so Rob, um, I'm having a good time with Switch so far, but I'm curious how you're feeling about the hardware at this point. Yeah, in general, uh, you know, I've been doing the uh, the two Switches, I guess you could say, which is I've um, played on a television with this, and then I've used a controller <clears throat> to do so, and I'd say my favorite so far has been actually just doing the handheld. Dude, yeah, I'm finding the same thing. Because yeah. uh, I go home with all the gear, right? Because I want to play at home, and then I think, well, okay, I'll just set it up, but I don't even get to that stage. I, I pick it up and start playing for a minute, and then hours later, it's like, oh, wow, this is actually working pretty well. It, and it's just that first gimmick from the first trailer, right, of the actual Switch. Yeah. But it it really was cool. <laughs> like, it was late at night. It was like 1 a.m. for me, and I, like... I was like, all right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop capturing. I'm just gonna get in bed, and it reminded me of like having, like, I never had a DS actually, but like back in the day, like Game Boy with that stupid magnifying light <laughs> in order to like, you know, to actually see the screen. And I'm just doing that in bed with my pillows propped up, and I played till 5:30 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> like nonstop, and it was really, really awesome. All right, so uh, do, are you concerned about anything right now? Because I know uh, battery life <laughs> is a concern for a lot of people. I was able to get about three hours, just under three hours, playing with airplane mode on at full brightness uh, with Zelda, which I felt like was pretty good because this is not like a DS, right? Like the games we're playing on here are much more high end. Um, so I'm not terribly like upset about that, but it is yeah. slightly disappointing to know that I basically have to keep this tethered and I won't be able to play like on a long flight. I haven't had any luck charging over a USB battery, though that's supposed to work. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be one to say anything about battery life just because, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm playing in my bed. I might as well just, like, have this thing charged sure. um, and, yeah, utilizing that. Um, but I don't know. I mean, if we've talked about this. Like, for me, that's fine because I sure as hell am not going to play this on the bus. Uh, I, I guess flights would be the one concern, right? Like, hopefully yeah. it's a uh, it's a nice flight where they have, uh, <laughs> like, an outlet or something. But for the most part, yeah. um, I'm pretty content with just you know, watching TV with it or, you know, doing just like household uh, situations, I guess you could say. Uh, one GWX in the chat is asking if we've been experiencing the disconnect issues for the left Joy-Con. Um, I've seen a lot of these reports. I've had no problems. Just, I've not heard this. Disconnect what? Uh, so apparently the left Joy-Con is losing sync with the console, which is causing like in Zelda, like, so like the analog stick, if you're pushing left and you let go, it'll still think it's pushing left because the sync is messed up. Oh. Um, and there's been a few videos out there. Game Explain did a pretty thorough investigation of this. Uh, for a while, it seemed like it was just limited to the colored controllers, but I guess it's since bled over to just the gray ones. Uh, I haven't had this problem. It sounds really crappy, though, if you're experiencing it. I really hope that's not an issue day one. Mm. Um, I have not uh, had much of that at all. Yeah. Uh, Mark Hernandez wants to know uh, how are loading times. Uh, well, for Zelda, I guess that's pretty much the only game we can talk about. Building times aren't that bad. Like when you initially boot up, like yeah, there's you know maybe 20 seconds or so. Yeah, I would say uh, if you were try. No, I'm thinking. Oh, Jesus, I was thinking of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Now I think about it. Uh, <laughs> no, the only thing um, I would say, yeah, you know, if you die, it's pretty generous. Uh, there's a lot of auto saves. You're going right back to you know. A, and it doesn't take too long. It's it like just a few long. seconds of loading. Yeah. It's not bad at all. Yeah, and Zelda doesn't install into the system either. Uh, it's basically just running off the card. So uh, I guess maybe that's why the loading times aren't too bad. But thankfully, yeah, th yeah that's the case. Because Horizon Zero Dawn has pretty long loading times when you're fast traveling. Yeah, I was going to say for that game, like if you're the farther you go, the longer it is. Right. But uh, no, for the, in this case, it's it's fine. I mean, no complaints. But the, I mean, the, the best part about Breath of the Wild is actually like no loading times as far <laughs> as like just getting wherever you want on horseback or foot. Like it's pretty consistent. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Travic wants to know, do you need a grip for the Joy-Cons? Uh, it might just be the size of my hands, but honestly, this thing like fits in there really well, and I don't feel like I'm going to drop the system. It's not that heavy, uh, and it just kind of like slots into my hands. Like I, right. could, I could imagine wanting some sort of grip to, like, as you can see, there's fingerprints on the screen. Like, I don't want to get grime on this thing, Yeah. but that's just because it's like a really nice piece of hardware. <laughs> but in terms of just practical functionality, I don't think you're going to need grips <clears> unless... <throat> Maybe you have really small or large hands. It's not gonna fall out of your hands. I no. mean, it, and it's. I would say it's also got enough weight to where like it's it's just secure. Like yeah. there's enough like yeah, as you said, like grip. Uh, the, yeah, the mat is fine. You know, the only thing I, if we want to talk about controllers is initially this was 
kind of frustrating in that like you're um, with with the Joy Cons in there, your fingers you know obviously want to wrap around all the yeah. way, so they're kind of like hitting the Joy Cons, and it feels a little off at first, but eventually you know you just kind of come to terms with terms with it, and I was fine with it. Yeah, uh, you have been using the Pro Controller. Yes, and. People are going to think I'm crazy, but this is my favorite modern video game controller. <laughs> really? I think it's really comfortable. It's got this like leather finish on the grip, which uh, which feels kind of, it's not just that it feels nice. It just feels, it makes it, like when you put it in your hand, it feels like you're holding a pillow or something. Jeez. Uh, it's super comfortable, and the inputs are all great. Some people were talking about the triggers, like, oh, they prefer the PlayStation 4 style, but man, I've had no problems with this thing so far. I actually like it a lot. Um, but I've also had uh, decent experience playing with just the Joy Cons, like one in each hand playing Zelda. Not in this. Really, you've been doing that? I did a little bit. So I was uh, going to the grocery store with my girlfriend the other day, <laughs> and I decided to sit in the car so I could play Switch while she went in there. And I set it up on the dashboard, took the Joy Cons out, and I was just sitting there playing. It was fine. It was it was good. So if the thing that you're describing with this, where it feels like it's too, uh, you know. Like close, like your hands are knocking into each other. Yeah, you could you can literally just hold them in each hand and work just fine, presuming that you don't have any of those you know out of sync issues for the left Joy-Con. Uh, Damn. Let's see another question about uh, storage on uh, the Switch when you install Zelda. You don't install Zelda. Uh, thankfully, it just runs right off the card, so it will not eat up any of your uh, 25 gigabytes of memory. Uh, the operating system eats up about six gigabytes, uh, so it's a 32 gigabyte storage, but only 25 accessible. Uh, question, can you give me one reason to buy the Switch from Abdullah Al-Qasimi? Al -Qasimi. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. It's tough. Uh, <laughs> one reason to buy the Switch? I mean, the first five hours of Zelda have me pretty stoked about keeping my pre-order. Yeah. I'm honest. Yeah, I'm on the same boat with you. Yeah. Uh, it's, we'll, we'll talk about it now or later, I don't know. It's, it's a fantastic game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, let's see if people have a few yeah, other questions. questions. Uh, EDC is wondering how this looks in sunlight. I actually haven't really tested it out in sunlight too much. Yeah, I mean, I've just been playing at night indoors. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah, we don't have one to switch yet, so we're not going to parks and playing games with strangers and <laughs> laughing. <laughs> I mean, that's my fear, right? Like, I, there's just no way. I mean, this it's such a nice-looking screen. Like, someone yeah. could just, like, I just have that fear of someone just jacking it. Yeah. Jacking it, I feel a fear we all have. There's one thing I would say is what I was doing is like you know I was uh, I took an Uber to work one and I, and I put it in my side um, jacket. One thing that was like despite these things being like really secure onto the LCD uh, yeah. screen, there was still this fear of like these getting bent out of shape or yeah. something like that. Like it's not, it is very secure, but there's something about yeah. them that is kind of scary almost like the what was the iphone 6 idea of like putting in your back pocket and laying right. that screen like there's you I, want a case you want some kind of carrying device with this thing yeah i didn't bring it on set but i've been using uh, i guess the official nintendo branded carrying case for this um which is pretty great i don't actually know how much it costs unfortunately but um it, it's like just what you need it's just sturdy enough um and you know so to your point about these things being a little fragile i've been like trying to like torque them a little bit like to see what happens if I get super excited because this uses motion controls right so I could see if you're playing something like Mario Kart you know you're kind of going at it pretty hard uh, it like there is like a, a slight give if you really try to move these things but yeah. but by and large like they're in there pretty well um, yeah I will say taking these controllers off it it kind of takes it's a process it takes getting used to, yeah. Because it doesn't slide off like all that easily, which I think is probably speaking to the fact that it feels so sturdy. Um, I it's funny you're doing it at the same time. I haven't really done that at the same time. I, I I've been like using both hands for each one and then like pulling, oh. pulling them off. I don't know. Amateur. Amateur. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, is there a media player like the PS4? Asks Atari Jaguar CD. Uh, not yet. Uh, Nintendo, I don't think, has said whether or not we're going to see something like that. I would be very surprised if Nintendo allowed that to happen. Um, traditionally, they like to protect what is on their systems, even if it's not you know, going online and sharing that content. So my hunch is we probably won't get that, but that remains to be seen. There, there is a micro SD card slot on here, so you can expand um, and you know, take screenshots off the system. At the moment, just regular SD, micro SD cards work. SDXC, I think that's going to be available in a day one patch. Uh, so you'll get faster memory transfers, but uh, yeah, it's just under the kickstand. It's actually hard to find yeah, it's if weird. you don't know it's there. Um, I don't know if we can get a close-up on that. Whoop. Yeah, buddy. Zoom in on <laughs> the stand. Let me see here. So yeah, it's mm. that little slot right there. Whoop, whoop, whoop. 
right there, right there. Th- this one, right here. <laughs> that one. Um, yeah, let's see. What else is there to talk you, about with the hardware? Do you like the stand? Do I like the stand? Um, I haven't used it. The you mean the? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm the kickstand. Yeah, the one that oh, we were yeah, talking okay. about. Yeah, yeah. So I will say this: the angle that it pops out to isn't what I call ideal. Um, it, it's probably hard for the camera to replicate how I feel because that looks like it's pointing directly at it. But from my perspective, the screen is pointing like at my chest, not at my face, and you only have one setting for the stand. Right. So what, what I've actually been doing is when I've I have played it on a coffee table while sitting on a couch, um, I will actually lean it on the carrying case, oh. which then angles it up at my face. So I, I actually have a hard time imagining how you would use the stand, like unless it's at like a like something like a really high table, like a bar table. But sure. that's not that's not the way this thing is meant to work. So. Uh, it actually would be nice to see if we could kick this out a little bit more, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure companies are going to be selling like foldable, like proper stands for this thing. I I worry this is a little bit flimsy as well. Um, it's got some give, there is a metal hinge on the inside, so it's not all plastic, thankfully, but, um, you know, it is a thing that is sort of sticking out. You never really know what might happen. Um, did you just mention the the case you had had like a stand in it? Did, is that what we were thinking? Or no, that's not, that's not a stand technically. So that's like a thing that folds over the it screen. to protect yeah. um, the screen, but also hold game cards. It's it actually was a little bit hard for me to figure out what to do with that because it folds in a strange way. Um, but no, I've been just leaning it like on the case, like just closed on the desk. Hmm. Um, if there's right. if there's one thing about the button layout that I actually have not. Oh yeah, not too jazz about are these uh, plus and minus ones right here specifically this one right here uh, the minus on right. the left uh, Joy-Con, it's just hard to get to without you have to crane your thumb like over the right. analog stick right it's kind of a chore, yeah. um, but then again yeah right here it's it's I many of times I've done something unintentional like in Zelda you know take out a bomb in front of a group of people and then they look at me like <laughs> really terrified um, or. <laughs> Yeah, but in general, um, I don't know. Is this is this the same for the pro? Like, have you have you? I mean, it looks pretty. Uh, the, the pro f- feels great uh, yeah, easier, in regards right? to that. Yeah, I definitely do uh, have a similar experience with this button. <clears throat> it is super super small, uh, yeah. which is and and the fact that it's not really in a great spot does make it very hard to press. And compared to the other buttons, it's it doesn't really. It's not as much raised That's as the true. other ones. Yeah, so you you kind of have shallow. to. You kind of have to like give it all you got with your thumb. Yeah. Yeah, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, are there any games that come with it? No, you don't get any games with this thing, unfortunately. Um, That's a bummer. Yeah, but uh, I think they're looking at eight games at launch. Maybe there's like one or two that have snuck in there. And Zelda is really the biggest one. Uh, one Two Switch is super interesting in our experience. We did a live stream the other week, uh, which was I've tried to explain that game to people, and they they don't seem to like. And I'm like, oh, it's so exciting, it's so weird and different. They're like, okay. But you you really have to play one two switch to like kind of like understand how crazy it is like it sounds like I'm advertising but it's just genuine like that game is is weird and fun yeah I want to see the, all the other games right like there's the, like um, 25 total yeah. yeah yeah I mean yeah people have been saying it. It, it it it's a shame it didn't come with it right yeah um, yeah but yeah yeah um, are the bezels too big and are the buttons too small well uh, I don't mind the bezel actually like with this here I can turn it on and we can look at the menu screen so I mean yeah there is a bezel but in practice when you're holding this thing it doesn't feel I don't feel like I'm looking at a screen surrounded by a lot of product if that makes sense unlike the Wii U gamepad so this and the Wii U gamepad have the exact same dimensions for their screen they're both 6.2 inches and the gamepad by comparison has a gigantic bezel across all sides this is so much more sleek and uh, I've been actually really happy with the dimensions of the screen relative to the system and the size of the system itself. It feels like like a graduated Vita in a way. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's like high-end portable games, but this hardware is a lot more interesting. Uh, and there's no back touchpad to piss me off. <laughs> uh, Jorge Ruiz wants to know, uh, any lag using the Joy-Cons? None that I can detect. Um, so I think we've been pretty good there. Someone mentioned, uh, what happens if I crack my screen? Do we, do You're we, hosed, partner. Yeah. Is that basically? Uh, I, I mean, don't know. You mean, uh, I wonder if you can buy. I mean, obviously the the Joy-Con controllers and I think the dock they've yeah. stated have a price, but that's the console, right? Like. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't. I don't even think you could buy a replacement gamepad from Nintendo if you lost yours. You had to like go on eBay and buy one from someone else or mail yours in and get it fixed. <clears throat> um, I mean, this is the meat of the system. Uh, so you know what has me really curious though is like, okay, everything is detachable from this. 
what what is stopping Nintendo from just releasing new standalone upgrades down the down the the road? I mean, the system yeah. isn't out yet. We have no freaking clue, but I'm excited about the idea that like this thing has a bunch of different parts that are separate from one another and what that can mean for upgrades. There's been a lot of talk too about, you know, special attachments where the Joy-Cons go like based on certain games. Um yeah, so from a hardware perspective, you know, this isn't a review, but personally, I really like this and I think that it's just got a lot of like really interesting features and a great build quality. Um, all right, should we probably start talking about Zelda? That's what people are here for, I guess. Yeah. Yeah? Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> that's, that's what I want to talk about the most. All right. Uh, yeah. Can we roll a little bit of footage to right. get this started? So that's the plan. We have uh, a, a hands-on preview that uh, you and I put together. I yeah. cut it, and it's uh, on our site and YouTube. Um, and we're going to talk over it and kind of give more in-depth of like what this game is about. Yes. As well as other... Um, uh, pieces of video that we have um, the uh, combat uh, highlight reel combat well. and cool stuff and cool stuff some some cool stuff from our Facebook channel uh, yeah. but yeah let's get to it bam so this is from the uh, almost the opening scene when you sort of emerge into the world and it's big it's really really big yeah. <laughs> uh, inside here this is one of the trial dungeons so the world has about a hundred of these according to Nintendo <laughs> these are just like you know a few minutes a piece bite-sized puzzles um, I've only experienced puzzles in them at this point, and they start off easy. Yeah, they start off they start off easy, but you know, and and the puzzles like change quite a bit. Like, there's one that use the motion controls to tilt like a sort of like a maze with a I ball. I did that in one. It. Yeah, yeah, super cool. Uh, they're a lot of fun. They're a great change of pace. Um, there have been a couple though that I've I, I would say three, uh, namely that I that I've entered and then left because I had I had no idea how to do it. Oh really? Yeah. And then on the map, it it, it kind of highlights like, hey dude, you haven't finished the shrine, so uh, you can always go back and warp there conveniently. Yeah. Because um, some of them seem down the road to to uh, so that's dying. That's death. <laughs> so <laughs> death top of this. comes very quickly in this yeah. game if you are not prepared or if you sort of. Uh, man. If <laughs> so, yeah, well, you and I had the same experience climbing a mountain. Uh, your stamina is affected, so once that runs out, you're falling. Yeah. And, uh, but, however, in rain, the game goes, like a little prompt pumps, uh, pops up and goes, hey, guess what? Uh, during a thunderstorm or rain, uh, you can't climb. Yeah. And then you're falling. You can like climb a little bit, but you just slip right back down. Right. Uh, a couple questions in the chat real quick. L asks, is Breath of the Wild difficult enough? So far, the game uh, is happy to let you die. Uh, mm -hmm. Even running into a fight with multiple common enemies if you don't have your wits about you, they can kill you pretty quickly. It just yeah. takes one or two hits from them to deplete your hearts. Uh, so this game is, in my mind, challenging enough, but challenging in a, in a way that teaches you to play Zelda differently. I mean, it's it's. I think I came into this expecting combat to be a little bit more forgiving, right? Where, mm -hmm. like, yeah, Link sort of always had the upper hand in the past. Mm -hmm. But here, enemies, you know, they'll poke at you with this long stick. Like, you have to, how do you get past that? Because they can keep you at bay. Like, there's a lot of scenarios where you find yourself, like, having to problem, problem solve uh, during combat. There was just one there, and I was looking at footage and realized what was going on is um, one of those uh, Bokoblins, I actually nailed it on that name, was spinning <laughs> a, a pole around, and you could crouch below it. And, but I, but I, I was doing that, and I stood up, and then I got knocked. Mm. So like that's just like one of many ways where you, the game just lets you figure out uh, how to deal with these dudes. Yeah, like it introduces sort of the bigger concepts of like, okay, here's what combat is, here's how it works, like, you know... Uh, People may give you a hint like, oh, yeah, you should probably be careful when this happens. But there's not really like, you know, tu like tutorial driven sections. You'll get like a pop, like a splash screen with some info at most. But you really have to learn on the fly everything in this game. And it's it's combat. It's how to explore and not die by being too ambitious. It's I mean, I learned how to tame a horse, but apparently you went somewhere where they they kind of explained it. But right. But you don't even need that. Like this game is intuitive <clears throat> enough that even with the basic rule set and all the layers it has, you can still figure out what to do. Yeah, that's what was the first thing that I think blew uh, of the people playing in the office when we, when we the blew our minds. We, when we all came in and we had played two, three hours and what? You did what? You didn't do that? Everyone has different stories. And, and that continues to today. Like I... I keep ex I keep expecting to hear people say, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah no, I've done that already." And it, no, it, that that's not the case. Right. Um, as someone who's reviewing this game, I'm personally terrified <laughs> uh, because it just seems like there is so much to do. And again, the the world is gigantic. Um, I feel like I'm spending all my time just exploring because you know what? It's fun. Mm -hmm. um, Very fun. But then I keep finding myself like, "All right, I need to get to the story now," and it's. 
<laughs> and you have to travel pretty far and then you get caught up in something else. You discover a dog you want to pet and become friends with. Like that took up 20 minutes of my time just hanging out yeah, with the dog. And yeah. it was like, wait, what was I doing again? Right. That is definitely a case. Uh, it's not, you know, frustrating, but it's all right. What was stay on track? Don't get distracted because <laughs> there's so much to do. Um, yeah. Someone asked uh, if you lose anything when you die. It's very much like a standard Zelda game, right? Where you just I think you lose a heart. It's uh well like if I upon respawning when you die you don't lose any of your stuff you don't lose any of your stuff I think you re- respawn with full health oh do you yeah but no you get to keep all of the currency and items and, and things that you have and it sort of restarts you because it's pretty generous with autosave like you said so it restarts you not too far uh, back from where you were playing um so how does this feel like to you in terms of being a Zelda game because there's a lot of things in here that you know people have said to me like. Yeah, Assassin's Creed did that. Yeah, Far Cry does that. It, are these things just cool because it's the first time it's in a Zelda game? Um, what, what, what's your interpretation of that? Because it's this is this does kind of feel like two different things, but it, it also is just one thing. Like I feel like it's hard to compare it to those games. Yeah, you kind of just said it. Uh, it is so Zelda in, in every way. Uh, Ocarina of Time is like my favorite. Yeah, uh, for sure. And I replay that game so many times, and I'm I'm getting a lot of those vibes. A lot of those like tropes of Zelda that fit in really nicely and then yes like the, the thing that's surprising but it does mesh so well is this survival yeah. kind of western influence that yeah. is has been a trend and people have been you know like you think of all the games in the last three years like Daisy, all these like yeah. early access like you're out there you got to eat food to survive weather's a factor it just feels so natural let me explain the food thing because it's not like you need food to to satiate hunger necessarily. Right. But let's say you're climbing up to a cold mountain. Link will freeze if he doesn't have the right armor, but you can negate the need for armor by cooking a dish with hot peppers. You can't just eat hot peppers, but you have to combine them in a dish. And the game like kind of tells you this, but I didn't know it. I had to talk right. to someone and get that info. Um, and so because the survival aspect is so important to this game and there are so many layers to consider, it really does create this awesome dialogue with other people playing the game that feels like something I haven't experienced in decades like since I was a kid right like sharing secrets before the internet was a thing like I can't wait until more people have this in their hands and we can finally see like all the things that the th- four of us playing haven't seen yet because I'm sure there's a lot only in the small slice of the game yeah it, it's it's we, we've said this before it's one of those things where in your head because the game is you know not force feeding you tutorials yeah more or less but in your head you think oh, I wonder if I can do, can I do that yeah 99% of the time, you can <laughs> generally do that. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a joy. Like you, it it's pretty like at its core, it's it's like humanistic. I don't know. There's something about like, well, you know, in your own life, like for instance, an apple. Horses like apples. <laughs> I wonder if I can give a horse an apple. You know the the dog situation. So when I found that dog, it didn't give me a button prompt to pet it, and I I thought to myself. I wonder what happens if I kneel down close to it. <laughs> and Link brought his face up to like rub on the dog's face. It was yeah. like, the, man, like of course that works. And the dog like emitted hearts because it's a thing that the game wanted you to do. Incredible. Uh, somebody was asking, uh, does the system feel hot after playing for a while? I've had no problems with that. Playing in handheld mode, no problems. Picking it up out of the dock for about a minute or two, it'll feel warm, but it runs really efficiently and cool um, on the handheld itself when you're playing it in that mode. Yeah, I mean, I, I was, I said before, I was in bed playing it for like five hours uh, with the AC plugged in, yeah. and no, it was, I mean, maybe like a slight warmth of it, but that could have been me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, not a problem. So John Evans is stating that docked is about 900p and undocked is 720. Undocked is true at 720, but in the system settings, you can actually see a 1080p option when changing the resolution on the TV. Now, I don't know if that is stretching in 980p native resolution or not, but uh, in some respects, this is 1080 if you want it to be. Um, did you want to talk about like frame rate or anything like that? Let's talk about frame rate. Yeah. Um, about a minute after starting the game, I saw some really bad frame rate problems, and initially it had me, it had me really concerned because it was it was egregious to the point where I was like, I don't know if I want to play this entire game experiencing these problems. That said, it's kind of disappeared. It's weird, because I had similar uh, issues, or, or thoughts even. Yeah. Of like, oh, really? I'm not really... You know, you know when, you, when you tend to let frame rate drops be like 
okay is like in like high action intense moments where you're right. like you kind of like can step away be like all right well that's understandable but for me yeah in the beginning uh even just simple as a, a pan in a grassy field was like oh that was it it was a really lush field that allowed for really long draw distances across a huge like plain or valley so in those scenarios you might notice a little bit of frame rate stuff but yes by and large it looks really good and i'd say the frame rate issues are less apparent when you're playing it portably that was the weirdest thing too yeah, yeah like uh I never once have I seen any kind of frame rate drop while playing uh, handheld. Yeah, same. And I dropped the dock settings down when this was docked to 720p versus 1080p to see what happened. Didn't notice a difference there. Uh, yeah. So it's it's curious to see that, and it, it might be a little bit of a letdown. But that said, it, it really doesn't define the experience. It seems like whenever I see it again, it's almost like, oh, okay, I guess that was a thing that I forgot about. Uh, and I haven't been noticing it that, that much either, like later on. Um, and I don't know exactly like, what, like whether that's me just like used to it, but regardless, uh, is not at all like affecting my time with it. Yeah. Um, um, uh, yeah. Uh, to bring it back to combat, someone else in the chat, sorry, I didn't see the name. There's a lot of things flowing through, uh, asked about weapons breaking mid combat. This is maybe one thing that I'm. I've had to learn to live with. <laughs> uh, so most of your weapons early on will break after fighting just a few enemies, which can feel really frustrating. Now, like the flip side of that coin is that every enemy you defeat drops a weapon that you can then pick up. So you're never really out of weapons to use. But the problem is when you get something cool, you want to use it and you want to feel like you own it. But then when you get that indication like, hey, your thing's about to break, it's like, man, like I can't use this weapon right now. So I don't know what to expect. Like, I think you're going to get items that have better durability. I think that makes sense. But will you ever get items that will never break? Is there going to be a way to repair weapons that you leave in that semi-broken state before they actually shatter? Because if you use a weapon until it breaks, it breaks and it's gone. Right. It's not like, oh, take it to go get fixed. It right? explodes. <laughs> it does actually, kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so that's a bit strange. And the game doesn't really, apart from that one little warning and like maybe a little bit of text in the item description, you don't have like a granular indication of how much durability is left on your weapon, uh, which I think would be super helpful because sometimes I'd, I don't know, it, it, it's it's really disheartening to break something that, that you like and right. feel like, cool, I got to fight with a club now. I had this awesome sword before, but I guess I'm basic and back to beginning. Yeah, you, you kind of, uh, it's tough. Yeah, you kind of said it. Like, you, you just have this inclination to be like, all right, like, I'll just save this yeah. for something, like, important, I guess. Right. But then you're not ever using it, and you don't yeah. look as cool. <laughs> uh, the but, uh, yeah. shields also break, uh, which sucks because snowboarding is, I mean, you're not on snow all the time. You can board on your shield anywhere that there's a, a decline, like a hill. And it is freaking addictive. <laughs> Talk about getting distracted. I see a mountaintop, and I'm like, I wonder if I can paraglide off that. And then <laughs> what if I can carve that up? Dude, yeah, it's it's so much fun, but then you get the indication that your shield broke. And uh, I don't know. It's it, I guess it's a thing we have to live with. I don't know that it's a great thing. Like, there's enough survival in this game, like, in terms of the physicality of Link, um, that I don't know that I want it applied to equipment, at least so harshly. But we, we're super early into this game. There's a lot left to play, so it, it, things might change. There's got to be, yeah, some kind of, um, yeah, you said it, like just like some kind of shield that is just made to, to snowboard. You know what I mean? I'm like, hoping once I meet the Gorons, if they're in this game, if they have like a like a, a boarding slope, <laughs> oh, they better fucking car skate carve park. some lava. <laughs> uh, no, but I'm hoping like they have some sort of forge where I can like give them a, like a you know a metal piece of equipment and have them like right. make it stronger or something like that. I, it's, I feel like the, for all of the little details that this game gets right and unexpected variables that are present in the most basic elements. I, it's like I don't think it's crazy to hope for those sort of things. Like I feel like this won't be a problem, but I'm um, just wishful thinking. Yeah, uh, and again, I, this is such a like a sandbox, yeah, like open world where you just experiment. And I think this is better uh, than ever to show. Oh, John Luke put on this clip. Uh, we can talk more about this, but eventually I want to talk about um, some of the stuff that we figured out um, just by experimentation. So this is actually this is me throwing this. Uh, bomb around <laughs> on that Bokoblin and he didn't know I was up there and I kept doing it forever and oh, ever. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, the, the, it, there, there's still something to be said. Like, I want to experiment more with um, your runes or abilities you have. Like, this is one of them here that you get, uh, you know, infinite bombs. Um, 
they're addicting because they're infinite. Um, but and Link has this amazing thing where when, when he wants the bomb to explode, he pushes his hand out like he's casting a... Sorry, interrupted you, but no, that, no, no, that keep is going. A, I love that detail so much. Um, <clears throat> and there's like a good use for like any kind of like crappy weapon, right? Is to th throw it. Yes. Um, or when you get the... Oh, here's the moment you were talking about putting in the dock. Um, you just... <laughs> yeah, get the ram. <laughs> I heard that. Uh, the rams die pretty funny. They just Neat. like freeze. Um Chickens, this does have the classic chicken scenario from Zelda games. Yeah, yeah. You, you'll, you know exactly. Like, right when I saw chickens, I was like, I know what to do. Okay, so this tree, what's really interesting about that, which we didn't get to see, uh, but I saw another video. So that still has physics applied to it, right? It's not like a thing that is, like, fixed that once it falls, it's not going to move anymore. Oh. So I saw someone fell a tree over a little canyon, mm -hmm. got to the other side. He started walking on it because he wasn't walking directly in the center of it. The log started to roll. <gasps> And then him and the log fell down the ravine. Like, damn. You know what I mean? Like, for so this game allows you to do so much, but you still have to be able to execute on those options using the abilities that you have within the, like, you know, the game's rules. Mm -hmm. Throw a mop at a skeleton. Why not? Clean him up. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, hand yeah. so another thing with ha like hand gliding and stamina, if you can see, you, you are taking away your stamina while hand gliding. So there, there are these situations where you're rock climbing and you're not going to make it to the legend time, so you got to jump off the wall and hand glide. Guess what? Now you have no stamina for hand gliding <laughs> and you're falling. Oh, there's a river below me. Thank God I can land in that and, you know, be safe from the uh, fall. You're no, drowning, dummy. you just drowned immediately <laughs> because you need stamina to swim. It's just... You have to think ahead, and also that's where cooking plays into effect, right? Like, yeah. you can cook um, meals, hearty, hearty meals that will <laughs> get you through uh, tough situations. I find are. myself hoarding meat because, like, meat is the basis for a lot of meals, right? But right. then, like, you find a lot of items that are like, oh, well, if you mix this in, maybe you'll be able to run faster, or maybe you can sneak, you know, and be a little bit quieter. Um, it's There are so many recipes in this game. It's really yeah. hard to keep track. And at the moment, like the Sheikah tablet in the game will be upgraded a few times with new stuff, even this early in the game. But it, what I haven't seen yet is something that keeps track of what you craft. Yeah, uh, I think that's going to be super important um, because you can really gain a big advantage if you make the right meal or create the right elixir before going into a battle or even trying to climb a high mountain. Or even a huge disadvantage of making the wrong meal. Oh, yeah. Because I've done that a bunch of times and it just spits, it goes, wah, wah, and it spits out something that's like, it's, calm. it's pretty, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's like no, nothing you want. <laughs> Brown <laughs> stew. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I cut you off there. I don't know what we're talking about exactly. But yeah, cooking is great. <laughs> uh, Oisin V, left Joy-Con has crazy input lag and sync issues. Just to reiterate, we really haven't had those problems. Um, I was really surprised to see those pop up online. Um, and yeah, I kind of sympathize with everyone because I would be really upset if that happened to mine. I'm a little worried. Yeah, because no, you same. said it, it's speci specifically with these, right? Well, the, um, that was the trend, but apparently now it looks like the gray ones might also be experiencing issues for some people. Ouch. But I haven't seen it, like, fingers crossed, you know? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wanted uh, to show a cool clip of something really cool. Let's do it. John Luke, show that one of the stas stasis. Oh, yes. Um, to give you an idea of the creativity in this game, uh, if we can get this clip pulled up. Hopefully. I don't want to spoil Okay, it. here it is. So stasis lets you... <laughs> so it happens real quick. Just to recap, stasis lets you freeze certain objects and then uh, use like kinetic energy more or less with you a can, sword. You or, can impart energy onto it right. and it'll build up. And then when the time freeze runs out, wherever you put that energy, it will then react as though you're putting all of it into it at once. So Rob did this to take out a book goblin <laughs> on that thing, which is just... It's evidence of the creativity that's possible in this game if you play smart and really pay attention to all of your options. In your environment, right? Yeah. Like those things were in around this encampment. Like, God damn it, it's just fun. It's not even to like yeah. progress in the game. It's just like I just want to do this stuff because why the hell not? Yeah, and that's just like that video right there. I'm so excited to see down the road just gifts, yeah. right? Because we saw them at E3, and that's yeah. what really you know took me by storm. Was like, oh my god, this game looks. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, there were yeah. there was hours of footage coming out of E3, and all of it looked like so interesting and different. Yeah, and this, there's this, this thing where like you were playing, and it's like you know, <laughs> there's a boulder on top of a mountain, and now whenever I see that, <laughs> I'll, I'll save the game. Yeah, <laughs> and then I'll do what you just saw. I I want to see how far I can get. Launch into space, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Uh, this world looks fun. This world is really fun, so far. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping for some sort of like boarding park 
like a stunt course. There has to be. And, <laughs> and, and just thinking of that is cool, but then thinking about the characters. Oh, yeah, who they might. It. Oh, man. Because that, that's something we haven't really, I guess, <laughs> we maybe brushed lightly on, but like the, the characters in this game, and I would say by far almost every character feels well polished, crafted, and and unique and funny and just there's a sense of humor for each one of them this that like really makes sense. you chuckle. It's like so charming. So I found this. Uh, I, I don't know if I can spoil it. Yeah, Dang I mean it. we should yeah. probably. I, I know. know. What, what do we do? There's I, a lot of really tight restrictions here. Uh, yeah. Expect a lot of bad puns. Um, <laughs> there was okay. So there's this one merchant I met on the road, and he had this like existential crisis within him or something. Because, you know, I bought my items and then I was saying goodbye. He goes, all right, I'll see you later. Or maybe not. No point worrying about things we can't control. <laughs> just bowed his head and walk away. Yeah, you're just like, okay. <laughs> like, damn guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it just, like, there's a, I don't know. Like, it's, I think that there's a lot of evidence in this game that, that Nintendo still knows what it's doing. Or they, they know how to get the right people involved in certain games. I think if you look at games like Metroid Prime Federation Force, it's like, what, why is this out? Like, Nintendo has had a, a weird history, a recent history of releasing things that just seem maybe off base, right? That it doesn't really represent uh, what people loved about the series that these sequels are a part of. But this game does, like in every sense of it. Like I feel, like I said in my preview, it feels like the first time I played Ocarina of Time again because the personality of the world is very similar. But also the mechanics and everything else about the, the game itself is so new and novel that it's like Ocarina of Time felt like a revolution. This feels like a revolution. For Zelda, but but even for open world games, yeah, which is tough to say. Like I, I was stoked about Horizon. I really liked it. But playing Zelda has, is almost making me question. Like, jeez, like <laughs> Horizon's a great game. Oh yeah, yeah, it's I'm a sorry. great, it's a fantastic game. But next to this, it's like shoot, like I, I, if I was to make a list of all the things I liked about the open world aspect of these games, like the Zelda one would be twice as long. I think. Yeah, everything. Yeah. I think we're like looping, but like yeah, everything in in Zelda so far like seems to have a reason. But someone has thought about all the relationships that I mean, I'm I'm talking about a rock. Yeah, like you know, it feels like a rock has a relationship with and connection in the in the way of like you know sandbox experimentation. We're talking, I'm talking about like a character. Everything seems so interconnected. I uh, think someone threw a rock at me this morning and I hit it back with a sword. <laughs> I think I hit it like a baseball bat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because he's like, it's, the physics model in this game alone, like we were describing with the tree and with the rock and stuff like that and the snowboarding, it's just... And then it's, the, and then it's, it's the challenge. Yeah. And and, and no, the game is, is fucking, excuse me, <laughs> so great about showing you uh, something that is not uh, as uh, tutorial-based. Uh, for instance, you, uh, you walked over to my desk, you're like, dude, boomerang. You throw, oh. you throw the uh, boomerang and just like most Zelda games, it comes back to you, you know, on yeah. its own. You have to catch the boomerang. You have... And the timing of it. You have like half a second to hit the A button to catch the boomerang when it comes back. Like... And the only... <laughs> and the only... And what, and what I meant by like the like the really like uh, subtle uh, tutorial of that is you see that prompt. Yeah, you just see a for, prompt for right, right. half a second. It says it. catch. Yeah. And you go, no. There's no one who's like, hey, I like boomerangs. Let me teach you how to use a boomerang. Like, it's it's up to you. And boomerangs act as melee weapons now, too. So they're not limited yeah. to just being thrown. You can use them as a sword or, you know, a close-range weapon if you need to. Because why not? Cause yeah. it could, because that would make logical sense. It seems to be that's why it's in this game, like so many things. And the other thing about the freaking boomerang is that you, you can't use it wherever you want. Because it's, it's not, it's not going to... Like I think Ocarina of Time, if you threw it at a wall or a corner, if it got stuck in a corner, you hear it go, it would find its way back, right? <laughs> but this, is, if it hits any kind of object, yeah. other than an enemy, that thing is going to fall and it's going to yeah. stay there, and you're going to have to go pick yeah. it back up. Its trajectory stops, and it, yeah, yeah. It, uh, or if you don't catch it, it'll <laughs> <laughs> wait. Bye. <Yeah. laughs> uh, all right, folks. Uh, I feel like we're talking in circles, but I don't know. This game's really exciting. If you have any questions for us, please send them in the chat. Um. Yeah, because we uh, we're happy to answer what we can. Yeah. Um, we really just want to be playing Zelda though. So. <laughs> uh yeah. Any other uh, questions? Oh, was, there's one I forgot earlier that I wanted to bring up. But yeah, here's more footage. Oh, so this is this was so funny. This was my early uh, experience with like more of a personal experience through uh, Book Goblin. He was just by himself and he just formed a bond. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was like, this is so great, and I kept. <laughs> 
th exploding him. <laughs> and the ragdoll is really awesome in this game. Uh, and he doesn't know I'm up here. So he's like getting more and more pissed off as I'm just <laughs> continually <God>. throwing <laughs> him into a wall. Uh, it's great. Any sort of grappling hook? We haven't seen anything like that. That was a question. Not yet. Not yet. Um, um, can you have your own house or have dogs as companions? I don't know if you can have a dog as a companion. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, <laughs> they love you, though. Yeah. Dogs love dogs, you. Dogs horses love, love you. you. Hor mount, uh, taming a horse is completely different. Like, you have to, um, uh, you, you, there's a bond factor. Yes. You have to. The, you have to pet it when it's doing the thing that you want it to do. Not right. like if it's acting erratic, be like, hey, it's okay. Like, you actually need to wait until it, it does the right thing, and then it will essentially learn. Right. Yeah. Um, it's it's tough. You know, there's no Epona this time. Or I don't know if there is. I think there was a rumor saying that, like, you meet Epona, but you can't ride. Yeah, I, I haven't seen. I don't know. I haven't seen her yet. No. Uh, what can we say about the cape? The cape isn't really a cape. It's sort of part of, like, a hood that you wear. It's just for aesthetics. Uh, but we can talk about, you know what, let's talk about that. I. It's so easy to look like a badass in this game. Yeah. Like, I. you know, I remember... Every other Zelda game, right? You you fight forever so you can get, oh, now I got a red tunic. Look, I'm red now. In this game, like, it just takes a handful of minutes and then your shield is different. You've got like six different weapons on you. You know, you've got a spear across your back, a bow and arrow next to that, and your shield. And you're running around just changing between them all at once. And even right here, I actually got, I mixed and matched like a, yeah, like a sleepy rolling out of bed dude. I got <laughs> metal legs. Uh, not, I don't know about now. Yeah. Uh, you know, the uh, uh, Hylian? Hylian. Hylian, excuse me, uh, cape, and then, uh, yeah, a um, warm doublet, uh, I believe, for uh, cold weather. So you can, man, there's going to be a point where you're just going to have, <laughs> you're going to have styles. Uh, I don't know. There, yeah, there's there's a lot of customization there. Um, I forgot what else I was going with. How do you feel about the uh, the variation in enemy types at the moment? Yeah, they're uh, they're different. So you know, everyone's just seen these bokoblins, right? Um, but Pretty much. Yeah. I've run into some other ones that are different, that are more aggressive, that you know have uh, more of a long range aspect to them. But then they will charge you uh, yeah. and mess you up. You're you're learning. It's you know, it's very much like having just played you know a little bit of uh, Horizon. You run into these machines, right? And you got to change the way you play. And yeah. that's the same case here for every right. one of them. The, uh, the skeletons are my favorite. They're super easy to beat. Um, but basically, when you attack them at first, their head falls off. And it doesn't lose any health. So what you have to do is attack the head. But if you leave the head rolling around, that skeleton will try to put his head back on. Now, let's say you knock another skeleton's body off a cliff. And then you knock the heads off of two skeletons. A skeleton will go for any head that's close enough. It doesn't even have to be its own. I had a really interesting experience where a, skeleton, a skull fell off a cliff... And it like chewed and rolled its way back up the cliff to get Whoa. to its body. And the bodies there are like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Uh, people keep asking about the Joy-Cons. Uh, since you guys keep asking, no, no problems for us. Just the way it is. Yeah. Um, let's see. Lots of questions about apps. Uh, we currently don't really have a great idea of what apps are available on the Switch OS itself. Um, at the moment, there's more apps in Zelda's <laughs> tablet than there, oh, than there is on this. But here's a good one. What about saving the game? Um, in terms of, I just in general, um, you can save anywhere. You can save anywhere at any point. Yeah, but it didn't look like you could you could have hard saves. As in, I could go back to an early early save. Right. You can't juggle manual saves. Yeah, that It'll, was. You'll have like six auto saves to choose from. Something like that. <clears throat> the auto saves are great. Yes. Um, yeah. It's kind of surprising how seamless it is, too. I mean, I, there must be a ticker in the bottom left, but I don't notice it. But, you know, anytime you die, it's like, oh, perfect. I, it's right where I would want to be. Um, yeah. Uh, people asking, do we worry about scratching the screen and putting it into the dock? So I've got a screen protector on mine, so it's it hasn't even crossed my mind. But yours doesn't. Have you had any concerns about that? Like, do you find yourself being pretty careful when putting it in? Oh, screen protector as in like a film? Yeah, there's a film on this one. Oh, mine does not. That's what I'm saying. Ah. Uh, Keep up, buddy. <laughs> Damn. I'm sorry. I didn't even know that. No, yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah. I mean, do you notice that there's any, like, danger? Do you feel sheepish when putting that thing in there? No, uh, I feel a little sheepish. Um, <laughs> but where, <laughs> where I'm 
Um, <clears throat> most concerned is uh, because I don't have a carrying case. Like I'm, uh, yeah, I am, yeah. it, the dock isn't much of a concern for me. Mm. Um, there is there is padding underneath or in the dock for the screen. I don't. Oh really? Yeah. There's like it's like a little it's like a little bit of a um, like a spongy film. I don't know if we can actually just take. Well, there are two sets. Yeah, right here. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're so right. there's padding that separates it from the actual plastic. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, but no, again, I've said before. Oh, you totally missed it. <laughs> um, I said before it's uh, like there is this there is this in, instinct idea of sliding it into like a coat pocket. Right. But man, you better make sure there's no keys in there. Uh, you you want a case like it is it, there is a fear of like scratching this thing for sure yeah and it's kind of why I don't see again we talked about like you know playing it portable portable outside or something like that I would not recommend that to anyone yeah like it is portable it's it's a convenient size but it just I'm finding myself just happy to have that in the home because the Wii U sort of like teased that feature like yeah you can play games remotely on your couch without your TV. If you're like five feet away, <laughs> MLG in the park, guys. Yeah, be there by ten. Yeah, I, yeah. I, it's just I, I wouldn't do that. But uh, yeah, definitely a carrying case. I did not know about this film. So this came with it, or you you went like it came with the the, the official Nintendo case. So if you buy that, you get a protective film with it. Okay, so yeah. uh, that needs to be on there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I would I mean, recommend getting that. Yeah, and again, I would say as well, like if you're you know you, you think about putting this thing in your jacket. I said this earlier, like. Don't leave these Joy-Cons on. And even if there is this potential problem with the left Joy-Con, uh, I would... I, is it a sensor thing? Do you know much about what this this uh, fear or rumor is, if it's even a rumor? I haven't looked I, into it too much because I haven't had to like worry about it on my end. Yeah. Uh, but it seems to be that it's like a calibration desync okay. happening. So it's probably... It, Maybe it's something related to the Bluetooth radio, like where it's positioned in here. Or maybe it's just software related. Like I, I assume it's got to be something they can fix with software because um, it, it'd be weird to have this many pieces of hardware failing but not all of them mm. if it was actually a hardware issue. And there, there is a calibration option in the settings. There's a calibration, yes. Yeah, so I'm yes. Just, I don't know. Check out the, the video by Game Explain um, because we haven't had the issue. We can't really produce any content around it because we can't speak to it. But he, uh, they did a very good video on it. So if you go to YouTube and look that up, you can find it. It's a good resource if you're curious. Um. Yeah. Talk about rupees. I didn't get rupees until like a couple hours in the game. They're around. I yeah. I mean, it's it's like a Zelda game. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like a Zelda game. You like I you know throw some pots. Uh, I didn't. I didn't find any in pots. Huh. I've only found them under rocks. Pots under rocks? No. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> <me>? <laughs> <laughs> nice. So it goes. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> under rocks, I found a few. But they're yeah. around. Uh, yeah. And you're also. Um, you know there are, uh, I'm like feel like I'm going too far. You know, uh, <laughs> you know there's side quests, sure with rewards. I've been just selling materials and resources to get most of my stuff. Oh so, really? Yeah. Get yeah. Most of my money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're definitely like flipping shields that you find. Yeah. There's yeah. there's there are tons of ways like to to get any kind of cash. Like it's it's all there. Yeah. I. Yeah. I don't. I, I at this point, I feel like there's someone about to send in a squad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nintendo's got pretty tight restrictions on what we can and cannot talk about. Um, is the Nintendo Switch waterproof? I, no. <laughs> Let's try it out. Um, yes, he did just call me a silly goose. Uh, oh, uh, someone else asked, "Did we go right to the final boss from the beginning?" I guess technically it's possible. Oh, we have this clip. Uh, we'll talk while Jean Luc pulls it up. Um, John Luke, the uh, Guardian clip. Right. So um, yeah. Yeah, perfect. So this was the first enemy they showed in that first E3 trailer like three, four years ago where Link was fighting off horse and like did that flip and shot an arrow into this thing. These are surrounding the final boss in the final location. So And one hit kills. Yeah. And they track you. And so presumably you'd have to be able to dodge any number of them. Like I haven't gotten close enough to see if they're... Like I've seen some that are mobile. I've seen some that are in the ground. Like I guess it'd be possible, but you got to... You're going to be really good. I, I don't know. I don't think I'm bad at this game, but I don't think I could do it. I, I don't, like, maybe, you know, by, like, a miracle, you could get to the gate of, of you know, uh, Calamity Ganon. But, yeah, they're, those things are insane. I have I've been avoiding them at this point, uh, and you probably will as well within the first, uh, I mean, handful of hours. Like, they're just insanely overpowered. <laughs> like, you're on a horse, like... The horse could freak out and 
and it's just one shot, and then you're yeah. off the horse. And I, I like I ran like two of those guys. Sayonara. No bueno. Yeah. Uh, Rob, what kind of conditioner do you use? Is it Pantene? I bet it's Pantene. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was up really late playing, and I like stumbled into work. I need a haircut. <laughs> That's not important. Um, I think it's probably time to start uh, wrapping up here. Yeah. Um, we've pretty much said everything we can about Zelda so far. It's amazing. Um, I, I don't want to be here. I just want to be playing the game. Uh, <laughs> but thank you guys for joining us a lot. We've got a lot more coverage on the way and a lot on the site already. Uh, mid to late next week, we're going to have the hardware review, and then we're going to have the official Zelda review 3 a.m. Pacific time next Thursday. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all that content. You can get it right away or check us out over on GameSpot. Thanks again for joining us, and uh, we're looking forward to the Switch. Have a good one. See ya.